Hey everyone, today we are going to learn about light, its reflection and its refraction. So what is light? Light is a form of energy that enables us to see things. Light or visible light is electromagnetic radiation within the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that can be perceived by the human eye. Light start off from a source and bounces off the objects which are perceived by our human eyes and our brain processes this signal which eventually enables us to see. For example, if you are in a dark room and you have a torch with you. When you on the torch and you put it on a wall, the light from the torch bounces off from the wall to your eyes and then you can be able to see the wall in the dark room. That is how light works. Light is a combination of electrical and magnetic energy. Light travels in straight lines called as rays. Now coming to luminous and non-luminous objects. What are luminous objects? Objects that can emit energy by themselves are known as luminous objects. These objects can cause the sensation of light. The luminous objects are visible as they emit light on their own. For example, the sun, candle, light bulb are some of the examples of luminous objects. Coming to the non-luminous objects, these are exactly opposite to the luminous objects. Objects that cannot emit light energy by themselves are known as non-luminous objects. These objects do not cause the sensation of light. The non-luminous objects are visible because of luminous objects. So basically, non-luminous objects are dependent on luminous objects to show themselves. For example, the moon, the plants, table, board, these are some of the examples of non-luminous objects. Reflection. What is reflection? What is it about the objects that let us see them? How can you see the road or a pen or a best friend? If an object does not emit its own light, it must reflect light in order to be seen. For example, the walls in your room that you are in right now does not emit its own light. So in order to be seen, it must reflect the light from any light source in your house or from the sun. A beam of light incident on the object is reflected. We are able to see the non-luminous objects as light is reflected off them. When a ray of light approaches a smooth polished surface and the light ray bounces back, it is called the reflection of light. The incident light ray which lands upon the surface is said to be reflected off the surface. The light ray that bounces back is called the reflected ray. If a perpendicular were to be drawn on reflected surface, it would be called normal. So the figure below shows the reflection of an incident beam on a plane mirror. Basically, reflection involves two ways, an incoming or incident ray and an outgoing or reflected ray. So in the figure, you can see there is an incident ray, a normal and a reflected ray. So incident ray is incident on a mirror and it is reflected back as an reflected ray. So the angle between the incident ray and the normal that is called as angle of incidence and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray that is called as angle of reflection. Now let us look at the laws of reflection. What is first law of reflection? The incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal all lie in the same plane. Now look at the figure. There are two planes. Consider the purple one as x plane and the black one as y plane. So when you incident a ray on the plane surface, the reflected ray will also say, stay in the same plane, that is the X plane. As you can see, when you incident a light ray on a mirror or any plane reflecting surface, then the reflected ray will also stay in the same plane. The, this does not happen like if you incident a ray on the X plane and the reflected ray will be on a Y plane. So that never happens. So that is the first law of reflection. Coming to the second law of reflection, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. As I told you earlier, what is angle of incidence? The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called as angle of incidence. As you can see in the figure, theta i is the angle of incidence. What is angle of reflection? The angle between the normal and the reflected ray is called the angle of reflection. That is theta r as you can see in the figure. So the theta i and the theta r should always be equal. That is the second law of reflection. Okay, now let us look at the types of reflection. There are two types, regular and irregular reflection. What is regular reflection? As you can see in figure A, 
when you incident some of the parallel rays on a surface the reflected rays are in the same direction this is called as regular reflection for example a mirror what is irregular reflection as you can see in figure b when you incident parallel rays on a surface the reflected rays are not in the same direction or they are scattered this is called as irregular reflection for example most of the non luminous objects like paper pen etc so you can see a piece of paper or a pen from any angle or any side but that is not the case in the regular reflection as a mirror you can see yourself in a mirror only if you stand in front of the mirror so that is the difference between regular and irregular reflections what are the properties found by a plane mirror the same size as the object laterally inverted and object distance is equal to the image distance now what is the uses of reflection so reflection is the reason why we can see objects reflection is used in periscopes to view advancing enemies in the battlefield from a safe position reflection helps in medical diagnosis and optical communications light and sound both follow the law of reflection using the law of reflection for sound and light we can measure accurately the distances to objects reflection is the reason why we hear the echo of sound refraction what is refraction refraction is the bending of light when it enters one transparent medium into another so you would have seen that when you take a pencil and submerge that into the water then it looks bent that is called as refraction it is caused by different speeds of light in different medium so consider two mediums that is air and water so what happens is that when the light travels from air into the water the speed of the light reduces right so th that is when the refraction happens the greater the optical density of the medium the slower the speed of light as you can see in the figure when the incident ray is put from air to water the speed of the light reduces that is when the ray tends to move towards the normal consider one more situation when the ray is put from water towards air then what happens the speed of the light increases as it comes out of the water then that move to away from the normal so that is called as refraction now let us look at the laws of refraction first law of refraction the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal all lie in the same plane so this is similar to the first law of reflection as i have explained earlier the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal everything is in the same plane coming to the second law for two particular media the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant so what they are saying here is that sine of i by sine of r is equals to some constant n what is i here it is the angle of incidence what is r angle of refraction so sin i by sin r is equals to n n is a constant what is n n is a refractive index how do you calculate n so speed of light in vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so light is found to move slower in optically denser mediums example glass and water so how do you find n is that n is equals to speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in medium so you will have different speed in different medium so n is equals to c divided by v then you will get the value of n then you will can calculate that sin i divided by sin r is equals to n so that is the second law of refraction now where do you see the daily phenomenon of refraction swimming pool and ponds appear shallower than it really is so when you visit a swimming pool or a pond so you see you can see the ground below it right so when you look at it 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 feels like the ground is very shallow when then when you enter the swimming pool you will get to know that it is very deep so that is one phenomenon of refraction object is at deeper depth than where it appears to be bent objects in liquids so as you can see in the figure and as i have explained earlier when you take a pencil and put it inside the water then you will find that the object looks bent so that is one of the phenomenon of refraction the frequency of the refracted ray remains constant due to partial reflection and absorption of light at the interference the intensity of the refracted ray will be less than the incident ray when the light crosses the boundary between two media deviation of light occurs resulting in refraction such that there is a change in wavelength and speed of light so the, these are the, this is the main cause of refraction what are the effects of refraction twinkling of stars is due to the refraction of light mirage and looping are optical illusions which are the result of refraction of light then 
as i told earlier the swimming pools look shallower etc Thank you.